Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm your host Paul and earlier you saw Max on the gun. So let me ask you guys a question. Say you're choosing between two setups. The first is an older proven but simpler design and the second is a newer but best in class performer. Which way would you lean? So we're looking at that very question today in our choice between two optics, neither of which are new to the channel or for those who are looking at the very best of gear. So the first optic we're gonna talk about is an old design, it's 20 plus years. And of course, it's coming back again, just like a 90s trend. And of course, we're talking about the Trijicon ACOG. And in this instance, it's the ECOS, E-C-O-S, which is their latest dual optic design, which solves problems in both the short and long range in a single optic. And our second optic, which was recently featured as one of the best LPVOs out there right now, the Vortex Razor 1 to 6. So instead of a dual optic design, the Razor 1 to 6 seeks to solve all your life's problems, shooting and otherwise, within a single 30 millimeter tube. Now, if you're choosing between the two, I can see why the choice could be pretty hard because your capabilities are pretty close. But in our experience, if you understand the capabilities of both, the limitations of both, and most importantly, measure the performance of both against each other, you'll have the right data points that you need to make an informed decision. So knowing that, that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's go. First, let's talk about the most obvious difference between these two setups. Simpler designs weigh less, and that's especially true when you're talking about a fixed magnification optic like the ACOG. So even with the addition of the Trijicon RMR on top, you're looking at about 15 ounces total, and that includes the Bobro Design Trijicon QD mount. But there is no LPVO that exists right now that I know of that's less than 15 ounces. The only ones that ever existed were the now discontinued Leupold 1 to 6 and Swarovski 1 to 6, which we featured in our 2016 video. I'll leave a link to it. So the closest you're gonna get is 17 ounces. A lot of scopes have that weight. And that's still not counting the scope mount, which can add three and a half to eight ounces to the total. So we talk about weight first, because from my experience, this is usually a make or break factor for a lot of shooters. Some want the absolute lightest gun they can build and don't see how adding 27 ounces for a Vortex Razor one to six combo will further that goal. So if this is you, then stop here because an LPVO will not compete with a fixed magnification optic in that regards. But there are trade-offs. And because of that, as you'll see later, with greater weight comes greater capabilities. So the second big difference between these two is how their reticles are lit. While the ACOG is simple in construction, its uh, illumination methods are what I would call redundantly complex. Starting with the RMR Type 2 red dot on top, which you've seen from our older video, I'll link to it if you haven't already seen it, is usually controlled with these big side buttons. You can always dial in the exact amount of dot brightness that you need. However, with the RMR on top of the ECOS, dot brightness is automatically adjusted for ambient conditions. So it takes care of this for you, at least in theory. However, in practice, what we found is that the auto adjustment comes up short. It's like one or two settings too low, so it will appear a little too dim during the day, but under white light, that 3.25 MOA dot is really hard to pick up quickly. So if you're working a lot with white light, take this into consideration. Whereas the RMR is battery powered, the Magnify ACOG doesn't need batteries at all. The first illumination method you can see, although some say too easily, is through the top mounted fiber optic pipe. So the more sunlight you expose to that fiber optic, the brighter those crosshairs are gonna get. At high noon, you're definitely gonna need something to partially cover that fiber optic because it's way brighter than it needs to be. However, the flip side of that fiber optic is that, just like the Trijicon TR24 we looked at several years ago, it will wash out when you're moving into shadow and shooting out into a bright area. So the Vortex Razor is more like the RMR in that you're dialing in the exact brightness you need. So even on a bright sunny day like this, its highest setting 11 is enough for you to pick out that bright center dot for fast 1x shooting. And of course, during low light, you can dial in the exact amount of illumination that you need. One last note regarding dot brightness is that battery life is also a big differentiator. Since the RMR has an auto adjusting diode, Trijicon says you can expect 17,000 hours before battery change. So that's roughly two years. And as we mentioned on the ACOG, unless the sun burns out, you're not gonna be short of bright illumination during the daytime. And if we're talking nighttime, it does have trading illumination and its half-life is 12 years. But the Razor, just like most other LPVOs with 2032 batteries, has a battery life of approximately 120 hours. So if you need a site with a lit reticle that's gonna be constant on 24 seven, that choice is easy. No LPVO will do that for you with current technology. So with that bright dot, you're ready to do some shooting at speed. 
In theory, having a red dot like the RMR for short range should be the optimal solution since dots don't have eye relief. While this is true, the RMR does have some limitations. First, the RMR is a mini red dot, so its window size is a lot smaller than a typical full size dot. Secondly, since this RMR is in piggyback mounting position, your cheek weld is not that strong. It's more of a chin weld, so you lose some support for controlling recoil. This is one area where having an offset canted dot would likely be a better solution since you don't lose that cheek weld. However, offset dots only work for strong side shooting and often get snagged on stuff when you're working in tight environments like vehicles. A piggyback dot does help in those situations. In comparison, an LPVO should be slower since it's more sensitive to head position and has eye relief. And remember, this Vortex setup is 12 ounces heavier than the ACOG, so in theory, it should be slower to swing from target to target. So we put together a course of fire that involves some shooting on the move on reduced size iptics ranging from seven to 15 yards. And let's run this three times for each setup and see what kind of data we get. Time. 7.52. 7.52. Time. 8.02. 8.02. Okay, so these times resemble what we saw in our LPVO versus red dot video. I'll leave a link to it. When you have that large 45 millimeter LPVO eyepiece, a few inches from your eye, it's a lot easier to pick up that illuminated reticle as soon as you mount it. And lastly, I think that cheek wall does make a difference since your recoil control isn't the best with just your chin resting on it. Now that we've looked at raw 1X performance, let's shift to shooting beyond room distance. With this ACOG setup, it's main advantage is that you can shift between 1X or 4X very quickly since you're just shifting cheek weld. At least that's the theory. Now compare that with an LPVO that uses a throw lever that you have to take your hand off and it takes some time to move between magnification levels. So that's all in theory, but just like earlier, we should test this under a timer and see how these two stack up when you're transitioning between magnified and 1X views. We put together a course of fire that transitions between a 50 yard reduced size IPSC to some contact distance targets and then back to 25 yards. So let's run this three times for each setup and see what kind of data we get. Five fifty-two. Say again. Five fifty-two. Time. Six oh four. Six oh four. Okay, so on the ACOG, I think the transition to the RMR takes a little bit more time than you think it would when you shift cheek welds and move to that smaller window. And on the LPVO, Max didn't dial down his magnification for the close targets. Instead, he just chose to use his bright reticle for some occluded shooting for those close targets. That little bit of 2X magnification helps for some added precision, but you still get a wide enough field of view to immediately transition to your next target. So once you're under magnification, you're gonna notice some more differences. First off, both these optics share the same excellent Japanese glass, so it's gonna be hard to favor one over the other just based on this factor of glass clarity, contrast, or distortion. They're both quite excellent. But one area where you'll notice the difference is that the ACOG is going to be a little bit brighter due to its larger objective lens at 32 millimeters versus an LPVO, which is 24 millimeters. So at dusk or low light, the ACOG will look a little bit better. Another key difference is the reticle choices. For ACOGs, you've got a ton of reticles to choose from, but they're all largely BDC. Whereas the Razor offers you three, the JM1 BDC and the two MOA and mill crosshair reticles. If you're not a fan of BDC, you'll likely want to lean towards the Razor. And while we're talking the reticle, let's circle back to illumination. Typically, you don't need it under magnification since you're using your Stadia lines for holdovers and you're not target focused. But since the ACOG is fiber optic power, the illumination often tends to be too much for long range. You can see here that bright ass reticle tends to cover too much of the target. So it's a bit of a mess with this many crosshairs to work with. In our opinion, the Razor has the better design for long range where only your center dot is illuminated and your ladder lines are thin and black for easier aiming. And since we're talking fine reticles, one last key difference between the ACOG is that it does not have an adjustable diopter. So it's fixed at a value of minus three quarters. Whereas an LPVO has an adjustable diopter, so you can dial in the perfect crisp reticle for your current corrected vision. So my advice is before you buy, be sure to look through an ACOG at a distance target and ask yourself if the reticle is clear. If it's not clear, there's no way to adjust the optic for it. Now let's spend some time validating our performance at range. 
So we discussed size and weight earlier, but physics also comes into play when we're talking eye relief. The razor is 10 inches long, so it's similar to other LPVOs in that it has the same eye relief at 1X as it does at 6X, about four inches. And it's a very comfortable eye box as well. But at a little over six inches long, the ACOG is a much smaller optic and therefore it can't beat the laws of physics. To get a full side picture, you're gonna to need to scrunch up against the optic since it only has 1.5 inches of eye relief. Larger ACOGs like the TA-11 are a little bit better at 2.4 inches eye relief. So if you're gonna be running your stock all the way out or end up in a weird shooting position, you may have trouble getting your eye close enough to the eyepiece for optimal sight picture for ACOGs. So like the other section before it, we asked, does this matter when it comes to performance? Well, we need to test it. We put together a course fire here with a steel out at 200, 300, and 400 yards. Using Strelic for each setup, these are holds using our Criterion 16 inch barrels shooting 55 grain factory reloads. Let's run this three times for each setup and see what kind of data we get. Hit. 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 Time, 12.34, 12.34. Okay, admittedly, these times surprise us a little bit. Given that the Razor has a higher top end magnification, we figured that it'd be harder to shoot quickly, but as it turns out, it was the opposite experience. At 6X, there was still plenty enough field of view to track to the next target and engage, even though the ACOG has a wider field of view spec wise. So in the end, it did seem that the more cramped one and a half inches eye relief did play a part in somewhat slowing down the performance of the ACOG. So one last note about all our tests. These are just our numbers and we're average shooters. I encourage you to set up your own time courses of fire and gather your own data to see if your results match ours. Only you can decide what best meets your needs and what you're willing to sacrifice to achieve them. All right, everybody, we're back. So what's the final verdict on this premium $1,500 matchup? So I think it's pretty obvious that when you lay out the factors and compare them against each other, that an LPVO in general is gonna bring more to the table in terms of capabilities and less limitations versus a fixed magnification optic, even if it has a piggyback red dot. Having said that, uh, you never really know if any of those factors are gonna be make or break as far as decisions, or whether or not you're gonna have an external factor come into play that's gonna override all of them. Just as one example, I know several dudes that are building M16A4 clones, and they want what the Marines have or the US military has, and they're not gonna accept anything less. So, hey, that's cool. There's no problem with that. Just know that, you know, from this channel's standpoint, we prefer to measure against performance. So, as long as you understand that and understand the limitations of ACOG, no problem with that. Just enjoy yourself. I hope that optics serves you well. So, that's it from us. But how about you guys? What would you choose between these two fine optics, especially since ACOG's kind of making a resurgence? It'd be interesting to see where this ends up. So jump down in the comment section and let us know what you think. Lastly, thanks for checking out this channel. I appreciate all your returning subscribers. Like, share, and comment as it really does help us. Thanks again. We'll see you guys again next time.